Hey guys, I'm Victoria Fuller. Welcome to my podcast, Uncensored Saints. Cheers, Kelly. Cheers. Kelly Flanagan. Thank you for coming on Uncensored Saints. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I'm I love how she you. goes to cheers me and then puts it out. <laughs> you are fake as fuck. <laughs> I know. She just doesn't drink. I do. Uh, it's so funny because I didn't even know I did that subconsciously. You just don't drink. I have my Starbucks over here. You know what's funny though is you go through this period though where you do. Yeah. And when you do, you're like out till 4 a.m. Correct. And I'm like, how do you do this? <laughs> it's actually insane to witness. It's like I go in spurts. So you'll be like laying in bed and you're like, oh, I'm so tired. And then you're like, let's all go out. And I'm like, what? Like, and what's then we all go out. Here? And then she keeps me out till 4 a.m. <laughs> and then other times she's just like so responsible. She's like, yeah, I'm not drinking. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, me neither. <laughs> the same oh uh, it's like two different people no literally <laughs> you are it's insane um yes thank you for coming thanks for having me isn't I'm it crazy you. thank no, you no i'm really proud of you truly oh i appreciate and it it's so cute Mr. States. <laughs> um so i want to talk about how we met oh man i know throwing it I, you had to think about it for a second yeah it's because it's a different era in our lives it really is which is crazy like we don't even really think about that like we, it's so different like i have a different friendship with you than like i would say the majority of people think like they're right. like oh okay they went on this show together but like that is never how i view you ever you yeah. know it's like weird because i don't even associate our friendship to the show me either <laughs> it's crazy so we met three years ago Three? Um, three years ago, yeah. Oh I think, well, we, it aired three years ago, so we met three and a half years wow. ago, That's which crazy. is insane because, well, it feels like yesterday, but also at the same time, that era of our lives is just so different. Very different. And we've been through so much. A lot. Which I want to fucking talk about. A lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> which is so unrelated to the show. Yeah. You know? We had um, our wild out moments. <laughs> we did, which I like want to get to. And we can be, like, as open as we want about it. All right. Let's do it. Okay. Cool. Down and dirty. Let's get to it. <laughs> Kelly Flanagan. Um, Kelly, I love you. Love For you. those who don't know Kelly, Kelly Flanagan is one of my best friends. And I absolutely adore her. But something I do want to say is, like, and I feel like both of us go through this, is, like, the stigma of, like, who we are as, like, influencers. So now people think we're, like, these influencers, right, after we get off the show. But people, like, don't really know our life beforehand. No. And I feel like for you, too, like, you were an attorney. You are an attorney yeah. to this day. And most people just think they're, like, what do you do for a living? You're just, like, an influencer. So they think we're stupid. But what they don't understand is that actually there is so much work that goes into it and if you want to be smart about it like you have to understand like this is a business in some degree like you have to watch out for like what do people like you sharing what do they mm -hmm. not like you sharing like you have to get really creative with it and use a lot of your brain in order to be successful in this industry Absolutely. it's not like you just are given it and then you like shine right like, a lot of things are very intentional yeah, and just because you go on the show or you gain a following doesn't mean you're going to, like, maintain that and be able to capitalize off that. No, a lot of our friends have, like, the, it, it right. doesn't come natural to them. Exactly. But you were an attorney, mm -hmm. or you are an attorney, and you went to law school, mm -hmm. which is insane to yeah, me. it was hell. How did you even get into going to law school, being an attorney? I know, but I want everyone else to know yeah. why. Um, you know what? I actually panicked growing up because I saw my dad was an attorney. And listen, you know my family well. They don't yeah. like pressure you in any sense, but they'll definitely give you advice in some ways. Their so, feedback. Yeah, yeah. Unsolicited. <laughs> Correct. All the time. Unfortunately, <laughs> you have to deal with that now. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like growing up, I just always thought I was like, oh man, I'm not smart enough to be an attorney. And like I saw all four out of my five siblings going mm -hmm. that route. And I remember like panicking in high school being like, there's no way I could do this. Like, there's no way I'm not smart enough. Like, definitely did not have the security behind that. Some of my siblings, it came natural to um, me. I had way more of like a creative mindset yeah. than I ever did 
anything law based so. i see that knowing like your family and for reference for people to like know to preface this conversation kelly is one of six yeah which is insane yeah. and her all of her family is in law they're all attorneys yeah and victoria has become extremely good friends with them now yeah. so she gets treated like a sister which oh, it's so fun <laughs> sometimes you probably regret oh but. no i love it <laughs> My brother and just Tom kind of, are my best friends. <laughs> they kind of just troll her, and they will yeah. not. They don't feed her any BS. Like they say it as is. So, but I can only imagine, like for you, like yeah. growing up in that environment. Though. Yeah, it was it was tough. You had a lot of pressure on you, but I mean, you get used to it at one point. Um, but then, yeah, I felt a lot of pressure, and um, I don't know. I just woke up one morning when I went to University of Alabama, and yeah. I woke up one morning, and I was like you know what, I'm going to give this a shot. And and I don't know how my mindset shifted, but I remember my uh, senior year, instead of having like any kind of social life, I had to get done all of my homework um, for college. And then I had to probably spend like six to seven hours every single day studying for the LSAT. So it was like a double load. And I remember being, I would go to the the law building and I would study there until maybe two in the morning. Holy shit. And I would ride my little bike home at two in the morning. My roommates, you know, I'd make sure, hey, I'm riding my yeah. bike and I'll be home in 15. If I'm not, like... Then I'm dead. <laughs> something's the off. The slasher got me. Yeah, because they would, they would be out at the bar. And right. I, I don't know why, but um, yeah, I woke up one morning and I was like, all right, I'm going to put the dedication into this and let's see how this pans out. Again, studying for the LSAT was not easy. Yeah. It was tough. Um, How many I, hours do you think it like took you to really study for it before you like took it and were like, okay, I'm ready to go? Never. You never feel comfortable really? with that. Yeah. You never <sighs> feel. That's the worst type of test. Yeah. It's horrible. It's horrible. And so I remember doing that. And then also for the summer, I came back to Chicago and I would take courses. Yeah. So not only am I spending like six to seven hours, like not really any weekends free yeah. studying, then I came home from the summer to study. So um, it never became natural. And I just know like my train of thought wasn't like some others and so I really had to work my ass off to do that and my dad always told us he's like listen you guys don't have to be lawyers if you don't want to yeah. and he was like what I could advise you on is that going to law school teaches you how to think differently and he was like yeah education is so important just having knowledge in general is so important right. and he was like if you want to go like I could help you guys out and he was like but I just want you guys to have, like, some kind of knowledge and background where, like, you could trust your decisions in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, like, kind of what he would always say to us. And I, I knew love he, that. Yeah, and I knew he was right. It wasn't like, you need to go to law school. He was just like, listen, I saw how beneficial it was for me. Mm -hmm. And he was like, and I know how beneficial it can be for you guys. It'll just, like, as a father, it gave him some security to be like, okay, my kids can go thrive without me. Right. They don't really need to rely on me. And, like, I could just trust my children. Yeah. So um, that's what I did. I went and, um, you know, my dad was – he went to the same law school I did. My brother went there. So I chose Chicago to go mm. back home and started. And, again, it, none of it was natural. I felt like – every. I feel like everyone feels this, but no one really talks about it because – Yeah. I felt like the dumbest person in the room every single day. You say that all the time. Like, I've heard you say that before, and it's so crazy because you're one of the smartest people I know. <laughs> no, so to, like, hear you feel that way, I'm like, well, fuck. Yeah, no, but, like, I hear you, but there are times where there's just so much out there to learn that I think, yeah, yeah sometimes I could grasp a concept and I could, you know, I know – a lot in that sense but there's other times where there's so many things I don't know and also too I feel like you probably felt that way because you're also the youngest not yeah. only are you one of six but you're the youngest and I know your brothers yeah. so goddamn well <laughs> that they probably trolled you your whole life and like you suck you're yeah. stupid so you just naturally had this feeling of like oh shit do I know enough? Yeah. Because also they're really smart too. Yeah, no, they are. They're they're extremely smart. And you know what? It's actually funny because they are hard on us. And I'm going to say us because yeah. I see how hard they are on you too. But they are hard on us in that instance. But when it came to something serious like that, they actually backed off. Aww. They were actually extremely like encouraging. I could see that. Yeah. Especially Mike. Because they saw my struggle and they're yeah. like, they didn't want to tear me down anymore. Like they'll mess around with us. But when it was an actual struggle, I was like, guys, like, I, I don't know how to do this. I don't know what I'm doing. 
Um, yeah. They picked it up and they were like, no, you got it. Like, believe me, we've been there. We've done that. So like those moments within my family, I'm like. Like watching them being encouraging. Yeah. yeah you're yeah. like, oh. Yeah. Like watching Mike like be nice to you. I'm like, he does have a heart. No, he does. And it's crazy because, you know, they don't give many compliments out all the time. They're when more they jokers. do, though. It hits you. Oh, it hits so different. Yeah. Like if your brothers give a compliment, I'm like, oh, my fucking God, I look good today. Because <laughs> they'll be like, oh, you don't like shit today. I'm like, that's a compliment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, I don't care what you say. That is a compliment for Mike Flanagan. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no, it's true. Like Mike even, you know, coming off the show, he – um. I kind of told them, like, I might go this route. Like, I see where it's going and yeah. I like it. I appreciate it. And at first they were all skeptical, but they – they it wasn't too much backlash. They're like, all right, let's see. Like, you know, you always got us to fall yeah. on, fall back on, which was great. But um, Mike called me, like, a couple months ago and he's like, I just want to say, like, I'm really proud of you. Aww. I'm really proud of, like, what you're doing. And, like, I almost wanted to cry because I was like, <gasps> shit, like, he doesn't give a compliment Ever. unless he truly means, means it. it. Yep. So when that when that comes, you're like, oh my god. Yeah. You know. I remember he did say to us recently. He was like, it's very hard to do what you guys do. Yeah. And he was like, you guys are do like he's like, I think it's cool what you're doing. And that was funny to hear from your brother. Yeah. Because I was like, oh. I'm sure people out there right now listening to us are like, what the hell are they talking about? But I guess you have to know the personality. You have to know the personality and just like a little background of Kelly's family, like her <laughs> brothers. We. Well, I personally became close with them like these past couple years because we ended up becoming all good friends because she moved to Miami. Mike lives in Miami right now, her older brother. And we all hang out in like the same group, which was like the funnest summer of my life. We'll same, get to that. Same. We will get to that because we have to talk about that. But it's very – I feel like just to give people context, like – they're just very hard on people in general, and I think because you're one never, of six. But they're usually not like wrong with their. No, they're not wrong. It's I, the hard I say they're not wrong ever. Yeah. They're just very brutally honest. Yes. Where you're like, shit, I didn't want to hear that, but I should have. I should yeah, yeah. hear this. Yeah, that's so, yeah. what's hard. It's not. I mean, they're wrong a lot of the time, in my opinion. But for the majority <laughs> of the time, when they're saying things, it's like, yeah. why are you pointing that out? Like, just shut up. Mm -hmm. You know. By the way, they moved into my building. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. Wait, the two of them are living in your building? Yes. You're fucking kidding me. I swear to God. They are mental terrorists. I know. Let me just... He's like, I need a key to your place. And I was like, what? So you can come fart on my couch and eat all my food and then leave? Like, no thing. And then talk shit and, yeah. like, be evil and be like, fuck you. Okay, bye. Yeah. <laughs> also, something that I want to touch on, how is it dating with older brothers? Yeah. Growing up, um, it was miserable. I, I actually dated a guy. I mean, you might know some of this, but I dated a guy for nine years mm -hmm. in high school at boarding school. And it when we first started talking, it was not allowed. One, it was my sister's best guy friend. They mm -hmm. had like a really good crew. It was my sister's best guy friend. And I remember them trying to set me up with a little brother who was mm -hmm. like still a year older than yeah. me. But I was like, no, I actually like the older I one. I like the older one. <laughs> yeah. And so – my sister at that time and again like he was like an athlete and like he was the jokester of the group so my sister was like absolutely not so i think my sister slapped him um <laughs> we went to like an all school meeting a fan or it was parents like all school meeting the parents were in town we go to an all school meeting with with every parent there mm -hmm. and my brothers are like eyeing him down i'm sitting next to him and they're behind us and i just see my brothers like staring at him the whole time I was, yeah like, oh, daggers shit. they're like we walk out. My brothers jump him. <gasps> yeah. No, literally? Yeah. I, I don't know if this parents. is like legal to do. <laughs> <laughs> they like jumped him and he like played hockey. So um, yeah. like the hockey team against my brothers and then it, the staff came in, like all the teachers and they're like, we got to break <laughs> this one up. <laughs> That's actually insane. It was, yeah. So it was hard. Like I remember even in middle school, the kids in the neighborhood would come knock on the door and they'd be like, is Kelly home? And they'd be like, no, and don't ever come back. And I was like. Oh, I can God. see them doing that, though. Yeah. Because they, like, want to scare off every guy. Yeah. Which is so funny, though, because I feel like your exact opposite. Like, I feel like you, if they really connected with, like, one of your friends. Yeah. You would be like, okay. Like, you probably would think it was annoying, but you'd be like, yeah, I mean, sure. It's, like, life or whatever. But yeah. they're, like, so protective of you as brothers. And I think that's maybe just, like, a brother thing. Yeah, but. no, they're extremely, extremely protective. And they're very honest with how guys think, too. So. They are. The amount of times... That we both have called Mike and Tom yeah. and been like, 
this is what's happening yeah, like, in our honest. love life. Yeah. Does this mean he hates me or loves me? And they're like, he just wants to fuck you. <laughs> yeah. And he doesn't like you. Yeah. So move on. Yeah. Because you're wasting your time. And I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. I thought we were getting married. <laughs> Like, like no, I thought literally. the wedding was tomorrow. No, I was like, no, literally, like he's obsessed with me. And they're like, no, babe, he's using you. Yeah. Like he's got a billion dollars. He doesn't yeah. care about you. And I'm like, oh no, for sure. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, you know, I, I know exactly. Actually, that just situation. happened not too long ago. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> oh man. Um, which kind of leads me into like our next phase of life, because you and I spent. An entire summer together, just like ripping it up. Yeah. I don't think I'll ever forget like this time between you, me, and Kelsey. Oh my gosh. Me, you, and Kelsey had like a year of our lives where we just did whatever, flew wherever, went wherever. We were like yes men to everything. Like we didn't care what it was. We're like, yes. (laughs) You want to go on this private jet? Yes. (laughs) You want to go to St. Bart's? Yes. You want to go on this yacht in Miami? Yes. And we did everything possible in that year. It's like almost like we crammed like 10 years of life into yeah. one year. And so I want to talk about that a little bit. I still remember I was I was so exhausted. I came, I think I went from Chicago back to Miami. And before that, I had like maybe four trips in a row before I even went back to Chicago. And you call me and you're like, Coachella? And I was like, Victoria, like, no, like, I can't do this. No, it's in 24 hours. And like, I can't pick up I was and like, fly. be on a fucking plane. Yeah. Then no, then she like literally got on a plane. <laughs> but we did everything. We like went to Coachella that weekend. Remember, I essentially got broken up with that weekend. <laughs> oh, my, oh, yeah. Well, no, same. If you remember, yeah, we were like literally, we had the we thought Coachella was going to be the best time and we oh, ended up leaving oh. both like kind of miserable. <laughs> oh my God. We have to talk about this. Okay. So we go to Coachella and we're like, it's our first time going to Coachella. We're like, oh my God, this is going to be so much fun. Like I'm getting flown out by Revolve. We're staying at the Parker, which is absolutely stunning in the yeah. Palm Springs. You were coming on a private jet, like straight from Miami, like a dream, right? <laughs> first off this trip was awful it was fun at first and then awful we were like oh we have so many dreams and aspirations for this trip first off it's fucking freezing in the desert if you don't know so you have to like dress for night and day which is actually disgusting and every time we made it to coachella we were freezing by the time we got there so our outfit didn't make any sense because it took two hours to get there we have a lot of chicago memories too oh my god we have so many memories that's just like a weekend okay moving on i think people want to hear this so are you dating peter i am i love that (laughs) and here's why everyone thinks it's weird that like me and you and peter and greg are all friends yeah like i remember when i posted a picture from the jets game it was the first time that it even like came to my brain that it was like awkward but it's not like none of that but it's not awkward everyone has to remember you spent a collective four hours with somebody on the show correct and the I, girls are the ones that spend so much more time together right so i was i knew you way better than i knew peter yeah. by the end of it i barely even dated peter i don't barely know him to this <laughs> day <laughs> like i don't it's, you know all the stuff i say <laughs> right i know him through your eyes and correct. your perspective yeah. i don't know peter personally so it's not weird for us no. to all hang out so i just want to debunk that and rebuke it's it. just it's different because that's that's what i'm saying is like when you're like oh we met three years ago on a show like i almost laugh about that mm. because it it just like when i think of you there's none of that that goes back I agree. There. like zero percent of it i totally agree it's like we've established such a different friendship and so many different aspects that like that is so far behind us in so many ways it's so true it's like more like i i feel like we laugh about it oh no like, we do it's more of like a laughing joke to be like that's hilarious. That's how we met. Yeah. Is kind of how I look at it. And I genuinely wouldn't say any of it is awkward. At all. But I don't – it's – I'm trying to think, like, how the public thinks. Like, I can maybe see how they think it's awkward mm-hmm. because they don't know, like, our personal stories. Like, right. stuff that we share. They don't know how many hours, like, we've spent together. Mm-hmm. They don't know, like, all the ins and outs. Mm-hmm. So they only see what they see. Right. You know? 
Which so, I and, understand. And the majority of that is the show. Like the majority of their memories of all of that, I guess, is the show. Right. If you didn't, fo- if you don't follow us on social media now, yeah. it's really hard to put two and two together to be like, okay. But it's not awkward. And no. if anything, like I support you one thousand percent, no matter Aww, what you do. Thanks. Like you could be with him, not be with him. Like all I care about is that you're happy. But you're happy. Yeah. No, I am. I can tell. I am. I love it. Yeah. And he's not with us right now. He hasn't passed away or anything, but, like, he's <laughs> he's not here. But I think the biggest question people will probably have, like, for you guys is – well, there's going to be a million questions, but people probably think, like, it's weird y'all got back together. This time around, it's like things are so much more relaxed. We yeah. decided to keep things a little bit more private. And um, I think it's been great because you're essentially, like, not giving people any kind of – I don't know, like con, yeah, right. ammo to like go at you, and it's, it, I think it's better that way, you know, right. because again, that's like a learning lesson for me on social media. I feel like I used to be like share every single detail, and yep. then I feel like I realize like you don't really have to do that. Mm-hmm. Like you could share what you want to share, and I think you know this past year between me you and Kelsey, like we got very good at that. Like we yeah. shared a lot, but like no one really knows the ins and outs, what was going on. No, and I love that. And I think there's something to be said too, because like, okay, we've all dated somebody and then like broken up with them and then been in this like in between where we're like, do I want to get back together? Do I not? Yeah. You just had the public eye on you. Yeah. So it was like 10 times worse because then people are judging you and they're like, oh my God, will you talk shit? And it's like, bitch, did you talk shit to your best friend <laughs> about your boyfriend? Yeah, you did. It's just that everyone's watching me and page six is printing it. <laughs> so like, yeah. yeah. And I think that that was like really hard as your friend to watch because yeah. I was like, this is a normal relationship. Every go, Everybody goes through these struggles. We all are like back and forth in some regard with our ex to some degree. But like you're just trying to figure it the fuck out like we all yeah. are. No, for sure. And to be completely honest, I would say I'm the most shocked with getting back together with him. Yeah. I surprised myself. I was like, oh, no. Like mm-hmm. I was in a great spot at that point. Um, and then, yeah, we talked and – had some conversations still then um it turned into nothing like we were just chit-chatting yeah. i knew his intentions he told me his intentions right away but i wasn't necessarily on that path um and then he just kept saying you know can i see you can i see you mm-hmm. and i remember coming back from greece oh man do you remember that sorry i was coming back yeah. from greece yeah and the flight was i don't know call it 16 hours because i had like a six or seven hour layover in newark um because I wanted to fly back to the U.S. with my friends. And I remember I was with one of my girlfriends from New York. She flew back, and she flew back with my dad's ring, like the mm-hmm. ring my dad got me. And I was like, oh, shit, I don't want her to ship that because it's, like, so meaningful yeah. to me. My dad's older. Like, he – it was very special. So Peter kept saying, can I see you? Can I see you? And I was like, all right, how about this? Let's make a deal. I was like, you go to my friend's house, Mallory, pick up my dad's ring, Deliver it to the airport and I'll have lunch with you at the airport. <laughs> and he was like, done deal. I have Seems a flight. Seems reasonable. At, yeah, he's like, I have a flight at 8 p.m. tonight, so I'll see. I'll come early. And I was like, okay, what are the chances that you have a flight? But, right. Um, I, I thought he was lying at first, but he wasn't. And I was like, okay. I was delirious. Literally delirious. Haven't slept in probably 48 hours. Yeah. Looked like complete shit. I was like, oh, God. Like, I have no idea what I said. <laughs> To this day, I still don't know. (laughs) I I don't know. And this is funny because, like, genuinely my heart was not there. I remember I was so delirious and I kept trying to explain to him, hey, I'm not thinking – like, I I was like this. Yeah. I remember you calling me after and being like, I don't even know what the fuck just happened. I I don't even know what was said because I was that delirious from not sleeping. And um, I remember he was like – he was like getting ready for his flight or something and I went and gave him a hug. And you know when we like leave each other, we're always like, Hey, love you, bye, yes. like whatever. Yes. <gasps> no, you didn't. Swear to God. No, you so did I not. left Mark, which is one of our like Mark less guy friends Shout too. Yeah. yeah. Spot hero, you spot hero guys. Love um him. I was leaving Mark and Carly, so I just said bye to them at the airport. I was like, Love you guys, bye. Delirious Kelly looks at Peter. Genuinely, my mind was not there. And I was like, okay, safe flight, love you, bye. And he's like, <gasps> he's like, what did you say? And he's like, you like, love me? <laughs> I was like, what What did I say? And I genuinely didn't know. I was like, yeah. what did I say? He's like, the last part. And I was like, 
the last part. What, yeah. What was it? And he was like, I love you. And I was like, oh, God, now this guy's going to hold on yeah. to this Yeah. He's like, so you're saying there's a chance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And That's then, so funny. Yeah. And then he kept just being like, can I fly to you? Like, I want to see you. So then he came out to Florida – or not Florida, Chicago. Yeah. Um. So he came out. We went to a Cubs game, immediately got caught on that one. <laughs> No, well, um, of course, the Cubs game. Which is hard because it puts so much more pressure oh on my you God, instead it's of just, so like, much having more fun. Pressure. That's like, that's my whole point of that. It's just it's so hard to, be, like, figuring it out with an X, too. Yeah, no, it was – that was a lot of pressure. But I remember at that point I was still, like – I knew what his intentions were, but I was still, like, figuring out and just truly, like, in the aspect of having fun. And then right. here we are now. <laughs> and here you are now. We just kept hanging out and things just kept progressing and – now we're here. <laughs> now we're right here. Now we're here. We're right here in the city. Yep. Together. Yep. Forever. Yep. Okay. I'm Do you remember ask, the like, cute letters that he wrote? Yes. I was going to say, like, let's talk a little bit more about the relationship because I feel like. Those, those were sweet. Yeah. He, I remember you sending me a letter mm-hmm. that he had written you, a handwritten letter, and I just thought it was, like, so endearing because he, like, truly, truly loves you. And for, like, people who don't understand, like, Peter is a softie at heart. Yeah. And he's, like, totally obsessed with you. <laughs> like, obsessed. I mean, who wouldn't be? But he's, like, I'm like, oh, my God. Ah, I got to watch out for that one. Maybe it's slasher. I'm like, kill you. I remember on the phone, remember I was telling him, I was like, Peter, can we just keep this little private this time? Yes. He was on the phone. We were on the phone with Victoria. And yes. he was like, Victoria, what's the issue with me posting someone that I love and I'm proud of? I totally understand where he's coming from. And Victoria, I was like, do like, it. immediately side with him. Yeah. And she's like, sorry, Kelly. And I was like, all right. Yeah, and this is like the beginning of you guys like getting back together. And I was yeah. like, post her. I was like, does it matter? Ooh, does it? She'll like, whatever. She'll soften up about it. Just yeah. keep doing it. Because I feel like if he bugs you enough, and not bugs is not yeah, like yeah. the right word, but if he like pushes at you breaks enough, me down. breaks you down enough, like you'll cave. Yeah, yeah. Because no, you I have this hard do. exterior. No, I But do. you're such a love bug. I am. I'm very I sensitive. But yeah, he was writing me those sweet letters and I remember sending them to you and Kels and I was like Yeah. I was a little nervous because I like didn't know where my mind was gonna go. I was mm-hmm. like, Oh man. But they were so sweet. They were so sweet. And I just support you guys. We're actually all <laughs> hanging out this yeah. weekend, so it's gonna be fun. And there's a big group uh, of us. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Um, okay, we have one more segment we're going to talk about. I do want to touch on this because I think it's important. So you are very open on Instagram about living with Lyme's disease. Yeah. Which I think is really important for people to know. We were talking about this too. Like we're at the age now where we're all being diagnosed like with autoimmune diseases. Mm -hmm. And it's normally right around your late 20s to your early 30s, which I think is just so interesting. Mm -hmm. But I remember specifically when we were on the show together – You were really tired. All the time. All the time. You said that you had gained weight. So much weight. I think it's like 20 pounds. Which is like, I mean, you couldn't tell. But like for you, you were like, I'm not, I'm not normally like. Like that. Like that at (laughs) all. And now knowing you, like I know, but you just got diagnosed recently. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny. And I take it back to the show. I, I don't know if you weren't in our room for this, but. I remember going on my one one on one in Costa Rica, mm-hmm. and I came back, and it was a late night because there was like lightning that night, and so like our dinner kept being pushed back hours, 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 and then finally I came back. I remember crawling in my bed. Actually, yeah, it was weird. I yeah. remember coming back, and I jumped in the pool by myself at three in the morning, and was oh, drinking yeah. coconut water out of a coconut. <laughs> Like, what? The shit that you did. By myself. Yeah. yeah. I'm swimming yeah. in the pool. Remember the pool in Costa yes, Rica? Yes, like outside of our room. Yeah. I had a bathing suit on, so I'm like, I'm just going to paddle around, <laughs> sip on my coconut water. Like, it was finally some time just for myself because, yeah. you know, you don't get that. Mm-hmm. But I remember going to bed. Then I jumped in the shower with my coconut, um, took a shower, and I jumped in bed. I remember waking up, and I've had this a couple other times, but now I know what it is. I was choking in the middle of my I sleep. I remember you telling me that. And I couldn't breathe. Yeah. I remember like like doing one of these like – and my throat like wasn't open. So I was like, holy shit, something's wrong. And, you know, we had uh, handlers. So I remember going to the handlers and I was like, hey, like I'm, I'm panicking. Like I can't breathe. Yeah. Like I don't know what it is, but I can't breathe. And I remember it like kind of going away. But 
They sent the doctor, and man, I'm not going to lie, at that time, she was not the nicest. <laughs> she essentially was, like, pissed that I woke her up. Yeah, she's like... It was, like, 7 in the morning, and she came over to the place and was, like, pissed. Like, how dare you? But I oh, knew something was off, and yeah. I think maybe I was allergic to something. I mean, clearly, it was my Lyme, like, flaring something up. Right. Um, probably under so much stress at that time, but I remember, like, that scenario for sure happening on the show, and I was just like, I, I don't know what the hell this is. And I remember yeah. scenarios like that continuously happening to me. I was exhausted. They you actually, were so tired. All they the time. they have like the shot of me too. Sleeping in the buffet room? <laughs> no. In that, Peru? I was doing that. Yeah. But I remember on I remember one of that. my interviews, they're like, Kelly, are you excited to be in Costa Rica? And like every girl is like, I am so excited. It's Costa Rica. <laughs> like, yeah. woohoo. And they're like, Kelly, are you excited? And I was like, yeah, I'm excited to be here, guys, but um, I'm a little bit tired. And like, <gasps> I do remember we're like all sitting on the couch or something. <laughs> and they, of course, yeah. just always showed those. Of like you be like, like you are <laughs> sleeping on the couch yeah. in uh, Peru, just, like, just constantly the- taking naps all the time. <laughs> Meanwhile, she says she has Lyme disease. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was. It's wild to think back on that, but. You've seen like a lot of the struggles that I yeah. have gone through and now that I know it's like easier to combat. Right. Um, but when you have little things happening to you and, and you don't know, you're just like, What like why is my body so much more sensitive? Like what is going on? Mm-hmm. But now it's like I know like the smallest things. When you're having and, a flare up. Yeah, yeah, when I'm having a flare up and how to combat it immediately. What do you do? It depends on what it is. If it's like um allergies remember my whole apartment was yeah, feathers mold. and i found out that it's feathers oh, too feathers, yeah but different supplements for different things yeah. um now i like a lot of the times i like swell up a lot immediately go into like an infrared sauna that takes care of yeah. it but i know like every supplement for like what's going on um so, so if i have issues with say like i eat something bad i immediately go to my charcoal like mm-hmm. there's so many there's so many things I could sit here and name, but I know what supplements combats what and done so much research to, like, figure out flare-ups in different ways. You know what? I feel like people are going to relate to you so much when they hear this. So, like, what is your biggest piece of advice? Because I feel like you dealt with this, too, and, like, your family all has it as yeah. well. Like, and it's so hard to be diagnosed, but do you suggest, like, a normal doctor, I feel like, can't really – pinpoint no. it like and how does someone find research on this? i might get hate for this um but i'm, I'm gonna be honest with you know tom's story it, yeah. it, it was really eye-opening because a lot of doctors a lot of them don't know nutrition that well right they don't really take courses on nutrition but nutrition is so important right um even with tom you know he's healthy he's like i know they say like what 80 20 like food is most important 20 percent mm-hmm. exercise he was like i'm not kidding i think 90 percent of it is food right 90 percent of it like what you're fueling yourself with is how you're you're going to feel absolutely so he was going to some of the best doctors in the world when he was almost in a wheelchair and they're like oh we got to take your thyroid out um your thyroid's not working take this pill there's a 50 50 chance it might come back and he was like no no, no. i'm gonna do more research on this right um he literally took it in his own hands, started eating probably the cleanest diet everyone, anyone has ever done in a nine-month span, and he was totally able to reverse every single symptom he's ever had. It's so crazy because I feel like it's so linked to what we eat. Yeah. And, like, people don't talk about that enough. Yeah. Like, you, it really is, like, what you put into your body. No, and, and it 100% is. Um, nutrition is so, so important, especially yeah. if you have any autoimmune issues like you nutrition is everything right it is everything and it's unfortunate because us as americans we don't even necessarily have access to the best stuff. no we don't we could go to like a whole foods and stuff like that which is great Mm -hmm. like make some kind of adjustment to try to eat healthier but even like we just don't have access compared to what the rest of the world has yeah you're up you'll go and lose weight and eat bread and butter all day long no literally yeah i just did it yeah (laughs) you're like i just came back but it's so true. It's crazy. Yeah. But I think that that's like very educational for pe- for people to know. It's like it's all about what you put into your body. Yeah. And supplements too. No. Yeah. Definitely supplements. And and they have to like understand too. Um, like some people are truly addicted to sugar. Sugar is like mm-hmm. the number one feeder for any kind of autoimmune issue. So true. And yeah. it is so bad for you in so many senses. Hence why she's not drinking wine and I am. Yeah. 
<laughs> I literally cheers, put it down. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's sugar is sugar is the enemy in a lot of ways. Yeah. And um, I see so many of my friends <laughs> or boyfriend having an addiction, <laughs> <laughs> having an addiction like to sugar. <laughs> and it is it is so hard yeah. to combat. So like I'm trying to purposely do things like buy healthier Mm -hmm. sweets options to like essentially wean off of that because it's so hard once your body craves that to break that craving it is so hard so you need to make a conscious effort and it's almost like a withdrawal like it's almost like it's like nicotine or it's like alcohol it's a true true withdrawal my dad is horrible with it and my dad used to be like a very heavy drinker back in the day and Mm -hmm. so drinking a lot of it sugar yeah. so now that he's not drinking like he'll go through freaking pints of ice cream right and it's just because his body yeah his body is like craving that right. and adjusted to that and yeah. it's like you got to cut that and listen my dad's 85 applaud him but he's yeah. also had open heart surgery he's had prostate cancer yeah. he now had um cancer in his lymph nodes like yeah you don't want to turn out to that you don't want it to get to that extreme yeah exactly and fortunately he's had like some of the best best health care so he's been great but um if you could take just one step every day to try to better yourself yeah i think you'll be winning in the long run i love that Mm -hmm. i feel like people are going to connect to that so much (laughs) we love it we are going to answer i think some questions from people that wrote in question one um Somebody asked, are you and Kelly still friends? I don't understand why people are so quick to jump to assumptions. Like, of course. Just it's almost like don't. I have to post you every single right. time I see you or we're no longer friends. Just because I'm not posting you on my social media 24-7 does not mean we're friends. Like, my, some of my best relationships I do not put yeah. on my Instagram. Yeah. We are very close friends. Very, very. Best and we friends. always will be. Exactly. Okay, we're going to start giving some advice because obviously we are in a place where we can do that. Let's do it. <laughs> this one's cute. Any tips for building confidence? Yeah. I like that one. Mm-hmm. Where should we start? Yeah, why don't you take this one away? Okay. Um, I think you just have to, like I was saying before, when it came to law school, I had zero confidence behind it. I think you just have to, whatever you're insecure about, put a lot of effort there, work on yourself. And the more that you work on yourself and get to know yourself, the more confidence you have with yourself. So, for example, I used to travel nonstop to foreign countries, learn different cultures, different, like, try to learn languages, even though that didn't really happen. (laughs) But, like, just learning different cultures and, like, talking to people and getting to know their story, Mm -hmm. I started to figure out what I wanted more. If I agreed with them, if I didn't agree with them, um... And I think it just helped me, like, discover who I am more right. and made me more secure, which also helped with confidence. I love that. I also think, like, piggybacking off that, being alone builds confidence. Finding out who you are, like, doing things by yourself and, like, dating yourself to figure out, like, what you actually want. But I think being alone, when you find your confidence or your, like, value in other people and, like, relationships, then you, like, miss out on really knowing yourself. So – yeah, I think that's great. Yeah. I would say one thing people may not know about you or suspect is that truly you are very like you have a lot of empathy and you are very sensitive. And yes. I know that you and I both have a very hard exterior at first. We'll cry. But you are you are a lot more sensitive than I would think people think you are. Mm -hmm. And you have a lot of empathy, like, as a friend. Like, it's very easy to go to you and being like, this is what's going on. And you're very understanding and educational behind, like, friendships, relationships, everything. I love you. (laughs) Holy shit, that was so nice and nice thing anyone's ever said to me. I wouldn't say nicest, but. Oh, my God. (laughs) I think the one thing that – well, not the one thing, but something that people wouldn't suspect about you is that, like, you are very, like, ride or die. Yeah. And, like, you expect loyalty from your friends because yeah. you give it. And I feel like once your friends with you are, like, best friends, it's like you're in the family now. <laughs> you're never getting out. It's almost like like the mob. Yeah. It's, like, kind of scary. It's like like your whole cold. family, yeah. like, takes you in. And I'm like, oh, my God. Fuck. Did yeah. I want to be here? I don't know. But You're I like, it. now I'm here and I can't get out. Yeah, but it's like you just have so much loyalty Aww, to the people that you love. Oh yeah. my god, no, I love it. 
It's amazing. Yeah. I think it's also, um, it could be hard with like a lot of stuff that you and I have gone through, which has somewhat been controversial in the yeah. past and stuff like that. I think it's an experience that we both share with each other. And it's hard to go to some of my friends that haven't necessarily been in that situation and get advice from them because they don't know the feeling. Like exactly. when you know the feeling, it's like, all right, you know, let's right. let's talk about this. Let's get through it. Let's help each other through it. Yeah, we've been through very similar circumstances. Yeah. So we can relate. Oh, I think this will be fun. So, um, like, what is your ethnicity? What's, what's your background? Because you're, like, tan and, like, yeah. brown hair. What's your ethnicity? Um, It is – so my mom's from Greece, and she is 100% Greek, like, from the mountains, villages of mm-hmm. Greek, middle of nowhere – and she moved here when she was 14. So I would say I identify mm-hmm. as being Greek. Yeah. But you have I, a very Greek like look to you. Yeah. So, yeah. People, some people think I'm like Brazilian or I can Spanish see that or something, but as well. no, it's the Greek. And then my dad's side is um, Finnish, Finland, mm-hmm. and Irish. That's like your high cheekbones. Yeah. Is the Finland. Yeah. In you. So, um, yeah, and she was, like, my grandma on that side. We didn't really have a relationship with her. But, like, from what I do know is she was, like, very creative. I think she was super tall. I think she was, like, 6'1 or something what? like that. Yeah, she was, Finns are usually very tall. Women's NBA. My sister looks more Finnish than I do. I look more Greek. It, yeah, Because my she sister does. has, like, the thinner face. Yeah, she hair, too, which I feel like is, like, a... Yeah. yeah. And then, um, yeah, Irish. So my dad is Irish and Finnish. My mom is Greek, but we were kind of raised Greek. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your mom's very great. Extremely. She's so funny. I love her. <laughs> Connie, shout out. Um, I am Japanese, black and white, which a lot of people don't know about me. Yeah, you have a little bit, right? Oh, everything. Yeah. I love that. I always thought it was so cool. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, Kel, mm-hmm. thank you for coming on. Tell everyone where they can find you on social media. Um, At Kelly Flanagan, but it's K-E-L-L-E-Y. E-Y. Flanagan, F-L-A-N-A-G-A-N. Everyone messes you. up the E. They do. Yeah. They really do. But I, mean, I think it's, it's not, cute. It's not normal. A little E at the end. Yeah. Thank you for coming on. Thanks for having I me. I love you. Love I appreciate you. you. I now let's have fun in New York City. I know. I'm proud of you for all this. Really. Love you. Love you. Love you.